Welcome into our audience on television and on our digital streaming network, CBS and Chicago. I'm Jim Williams. Six children shot in Chicago in a matter of hours. One high schooler is dead, shot here on North Greenview. Every time a child is shot, there are ripple effects. Their young friends, families, and community leaders all affected, including one Southside mentor who knows one of yesterday's victims. And we just go on. Thank God for the shade room. Thank God for media takeout. Thank God for the breakfast club, man. Give you son people something else to think about, man. Because God forbid you had to think about what's going on in your communities, man. Thank God for... <laughs> This whole thing about the voting rights bill. <laughs> Got y'all out here running around protesting about voting rights as if y'all can't vote. Instead of thinking about what's going on in your community. Six kids shot in a matter of hours in one section of one city. In one community of one city, six kids shot in a matter of hours, separate incidents. I mean, at this point, man, <laughs> it's getting worse and worse and worse. And I think maybe some people, some sun people are just, maybe they're just kind of like numb to this. But I, how do you, I mean, I mean, you can become numb to anything, but six children shot. In one city, one community of one city in a matter of hours in separate incidents. families and community leaders all affected including one Southside mentor who knows one of yesterday's victims she spoke today with cbs2 stephen graves and she's calling on parents and leaders to not waste time and to take action with each young face and name that's connected to chicago shootings there's a friend teacher or mentor like jerry jones hurting we don't want to become in a position where when we hear these things we're just like oh well another kid got shot no that is a valuable life yeah and i feel you sister and i hate the fact that what she's doing was saint titus one youth anti-violence that's her program it pains me that what you're doing isn't working because you've been doing this for a while and it's been getting worse steadily. That's the um, the conundrum. That's the plight of the urban activist slash advocate slash mentor slash program head. That's the plight, man. Like, not only is what you're doing not working, but like, it's like really not working. <laughs> and it's so many of you, like so many programs, enough programs in these cities for each kid to have his own program. None of it works. All the money poured into these cities from the private sector, philanthropists and, you know, big donors to state funds tax dollars that are dumped into these cities all these programs on the ground to you know prevent catch it at the root you know we want to we don't want to incarcerate people we want to you know <laughs> get to the root of the problem we want to divert them away from crime preemptive preventative none of that stuff works man None of that stuff works. None of it. 
hurting. We don't want to become in a position where when we hear these things, we're just like, oh, well, another kid got shot. No, that is a valuable life. 15-year-old Caleb Westbrook is the latest teen killed. Someone shot the Rounder College Prep student yesterday at 1.15 in the afternoon in West Town. One of six young people shot in one day. And a lot of the children are being bullied. Some of the kids are getting shot because they don't want to be in the game. You know, I mean, there's so many factors involved. Jones found out a 16-year-old boy shot with a girl in West Pullman used to participate in her anti-violence organization's after-school program a year ago. And with that boy and girl shot here at 4 in the afternoon, people like Jones can't help but wonder if things could have been different just by them being in another place. She's yeah, if that other place is not Blackistan. But if you put them in the stand in any city, man, any city, take a dart, take some tape, get a map, put a map on your wall, mm -hmm. tape a map to your wall, get a dart, blindfold yourself. Spin around and throw that dart at that map. Wherever that dart lands, if there's some people there, your child's not going to be safe. We're the same things in Chicago, maybe at a smaller level or at a bigger level, but at the same level. This is our culture. Six kids shot. In one day, in a few hours, in one community, in one city. In separate incidents. People like Jones can't help but wonder if things could have been different just by them being in another place. She sounded the alarm in November. <laughs> When shots were fired by West Pullman Park, there was worry over violence as her group and others get money for activities in the summer, but the funding stream freezes in the winter. They get money in the summer when the murders are through the roof. <laughs> the murder rate skyrockets because the shooters who are young, who would normally be in school, aren't in school. Yes, in this community, a large portion of these killings are done by kids. So the funding, so she need more money to do something that don't work. And what did taxpayers in the chat <laughs> hit one if you want to give her some more money or well, people like her some more money because they, you know, they need they need more funding to, you know, <laughs> their programs. Midnight basketball. There was worry over violence as her group and others get money for activities in the summer, but the funding stream freezes in the winter. For the last few years, it's been really, really bad uh, because of COVID. Data from the University of Chicago Crime Lab shows the number of kids shot in Chicago hit a seven-year low in 2019. While it's unclear why, that number has risen by almost 150 cases in two years. I was talking to my wife today, and I was just like, 2019? feels like a hundred years ago every now and then i get videos on my youtube feed they'll suggest a video to me and, and the video will be older it'll be from 2019 mm -hmm. watching a video especially about the news or a current event or someone you know giving commentary about you know society or social Watching the video, somebody's talking about, you know, racism, the economy, the government, you know, probably all this stuff, <laughs> the community tie. Before 2020, it's almost as if they're speaking a different language. Trump had this country going in the right direction.
the lowest sun man unemployment ever. Crime was going down. Now look at this, man. Wow. Those Democrats, man, what they did for power, man. They wanted power so bad that they were willing to sacrifice all these lives. Because that's what they did. Voting on this, going on this police brutality, um, criminal justice reform thing. That's cost so many sun people their lives, man. And so many sun kids their lives, man. Behind this police brutality, criminal justice reform kick that got them elected. That got out the vote. That galvanized the base. Imagine how many kids is going to get killed. Six got killed in a few hours the other day. I mean, six got shot in a few hours the other day. So 421 got shot in 2021. 373 got shot in 2020. And six got shot in one part of one day. One period. <laughs> few hours in one day. Imagine what this number's going to look like at the end of this year. Data from the University of Chicago Crime Lab shows the number of kids shot in Chicago hit a seven-year low in 2019. While it's unclear why, that number has risen by almost 150 cases in two years. We need our children. We have to invest in them. Joan says she's seen the benefit of programs like a basketball tournament over Christmas with free skating after, only able to happen with sponsorships. She's asking for parents to get more involved in their kids' lives and elected officials to help out organizations making an impact. Despite the challenges like COVID, Jones is pushing forward. Now, um, you know, we don't have a choice. As saving young lives takes priority. In West Pullman, Stephen Graves, CBS2 News.